Now, here is your host, Dave Vellante. We're back at Oracle Open World here in Moscone Center. We're in Moscone South in the QLogic book, uh, booth. Please stop by and see us. This is theCUBE. The Cube is SiliconANGLE's live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is our fifth year at Oracle Open World, and we were able to get here in 2010. Really, there were two companies that, that enabled us to be here. First is QLogic. QLogic gives us this great space you know, within their booth, very generous. Um, the second was EMC. EMC at the time said, you know, we think that the Oracle customer base is important. It's, uh, you know, one of our biggest customer bases. It's strategically important for us, and we want to help our customers understand what's going on at Open World, so EMC helped us get here. So, you know, thank you uh, for that, EMC and, and QLogic. Vinay Gankar is here. He's the Director of Product Management for Extreme IO, which is a division within EMC, so we're going to talk about Flash. Flash is one of the biggest disruptive changes in infrastructure. It's got a huge affinity to databases generally, and Oracle database specifically. Vinay, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks a lot, Dave. Really uh, happy to be here. So it's been an interesting week already. You know, Sunday night, Oracle comes out, they got the slide. We're X times faster than Extreme IO. We got this new product, blah, blah. And it's quite interesting to me because it's, it's sort of an apples to oranges comparison. Um, Extreme IO and the, the, I believe it's called FS1, is the Oracle product. It's a, it's a SAN uh, that has spinning disk in it. It has flash in it. Do you have spinning disk in your product? I don't think so. So what do you make of all that? Hey, uh, great question to start <laughs> off. Uh, it came out last night. We don't have, we don't have all the time to look at it. But reading through their uh, you know, marketing materials and data sheet, it looks like a hybrid array to me so far. One of the key things that kind of came out after combing through their data sheet, there's no mention of latency in there. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, when you talk about flash, flash starts with latency, right? So uh, to me, it's uh, a hybrid array with flash and um, disks. Um, so we had to see more data in, in terms of you know, what exactly it can do and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you're right. It's surprising that, that Oracle's not talking about latency, especially given that it's, we're talking about a database environment. Why does latency matter in a database envi environment? Can you explain that to our Yeah, listeners? absolutely. Um, think about Oracle. You're running your OLTP environment. You're running your customer entry or customer uh, application on your, on your database infrastructure. So every you know, microsecond that you can save has huge impact on your uh, users or your customers or your business processes. Latency directly transforms into the business value. The amount of money you can save and the faster um, uh, process you can complete, right? So latency is an important aspect for certain Oracle applications like OLTP kind of uh, databases. So, and that's why you, you see that Flash has been uh, this transformation technology, especially for databases. Um, so to me, the, the number one characteristic of Flash Array has to be this latency, which is consistent, and which can be consistent when you start loading your system, when your data growth uh, increases what you have, when you start loading up your system. So latency is all, Flash is all about latency to start with, and there are obviously other things that uh, Flash has to do. Yeah, so that's how I get, I mean, people want, DBAs want, an application is they want consistent performance. That's what they always tell us. Absolutely. You know, raw performance, that's nice. The benchmarks are nice. And I love benchmarks because it's a stake in the ground, but it's that consistent performance in a real world application. So my question to you is, give us the update on Extreme IO. What are you seeing in terms of your ability to affect that consistent performance, that desire for consistent performance? Sure, absolutely. Um, so one thing we see uh, a trend that's happening is um, in the database environment, now the DBAs take the center stage. DBAs wants to have all the pr productivity tools in terms of reducing their complexity in terms of managing the database infrastructure. Like a recent IUG, Independent Oracle User Group said, DBAs spend about 70% of their time uh, looking at performance issues. They're not able to uh, spend enough time on strategic issues like, you know, can we consolidate? Can we bring more efficiency to your infrastructure? Unfortunately, they're not able to do it. Now with consistent performance, you're taking away the performance issues associated with your database, 
right? That's number one. So as part of that, you have to make sure that you can deliver the consistent performance while delivering other storage capabilities that you have. For example, deduplication. On Extreme I.O., deduplication comes as part of the architecture. Running deduplication does not have any impact on performance. The consistent latency remains consistent. We also have Snapshot, which we uh, released about a quarter ago. Snapshot um, have almost zero impact on uh, uh, our storage performance. And then, and we're going to announce, we have announced as part of our upcoming 3.0 release of compression, right? Now together with consistent performance and data reduction technologies and data copying technologies like Snapshot, we have a complete solution for databases. And, and if, if we talk about this to any DBA, the DBAs like this story very well. We have done so far very well in the, in the, in the, in the few quarters we've been selling. Um, so it, it's a great ride so far. We think we have a very, very strong, uh, effective, um, interesting product uh, in Extreme IO for databases, Oracle databases. So I, I've seen that Oracle uh, user group study, uh, the independent IOUG, yeah. independent Oracle user group study, talks about how DBAs spend their time. We actually went out and talked to them and some of the ones that had brought in um, uh, a converged infrastructure to understand how that affected their time, whether it was an exadata or a V block or whatever, who's ever converged infrastructure and studied that, and we found that it dramatically impacted their time positively, and they spent now more time on the application. Have you seen, do you have examples or proof points where folks have brought in Extreme IO and it's had a positive impact on the time they spend doing non-differentiated heavy lifting? Absolutely. I can talk about a big uh, medical analytics company um, in the New York area. So these guys uh, manage one of the biggest medical analytics uh, shop in the United States. Um, in their case, they have production databases. The production database in their case is um, kind of OLTP and also data warehouse. It kind of merges your traditional OLTP and data warehouse, which means that you have small random I.O. and large uh, you know, sequential reads, right? So that's one aspect, the production database. So they moved that to on uh, Extreme I.O. and they're seeing huge benefits. Now that is kind of expected that we can we provide the consistent, you know, low latency, consistent performance. But in addition to that, they have a huge ancillary infrastructure, which is their test and dev. There are other infrastructure that are needed to be making sure the production runs fine, their new applications are tested, right? So now they're able to bring all that into one infrastructure where they can manage, they can consolidate the whole thing, they can manage it more uh, in a simple way and it also brings out more agility because their infrastructure is now one infrastructure. They can create copies on demand. They can um, uh, you know, finish their testing and development more quickly because their test and dev now runs on their production system, which is same as production, unlike in previous cases where they had to isolate this to make sure that production runs okay. Now because of the consistent performance Extreme IO provides, they don't have, that is not an issue anymore. So it's like, like and, and then for this, there are other, other customers like, like this we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis now, Dave, so it's, it's, it's amazing to see these uh, stories coming in. As you probably know, we, early on, Wikibon did some research on, um, on, on how to sort of optimize your Oracle license right. uh, spend, and what we discovered was, and this was sort of pre, before the days of all flash arrays really exploded, but we started with, taking Flash, putting it into a, an existing hybrid array, right. and, and optimizing the I.O. infrastructure. And what we found was you could dramatically cut, I mean, I think it was up to 30% plus in the cases that we studied, the number of cores, which had a direct impact on database licenses because Oracle licenses its database based on the number of cores, which then ripples through to the maintenance. Um, so I wonder if you could talk about that what you've seen in the customer base. Of course, not just Oracle, it's true for SQL Server, it's true for, for IBM DB2. It just makes sense, that's how all, they all price. So the bottom line is beefing up your storage infrastructure a little bit, maybe spending a couple hundred thousand dollars more, actually could save you significantly more than that. 500, 600, 700, maybe a million over the life 
of that, those database licenses. Have you seen that in the field? Well, absolutely, we see that um, almost every day. Um, now, the reason for that is that the typical sizing for cores is based on what is your storage can provide, the latency it can provide, right? So, oh, we're talking about latency again. Exactly, <laughs> I mean, it, it finally comes down to latency. <laughs> Now when you talk about that, it, 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 the latency impacts the utilization of the CPUs, the cores, right? So now, so if you can provide better latency, you can make your cores run in a better utilization than it used to before. So which also translates to uh, reduced number of cores. That's the you know, that's a natural way of thinking about it. And that's how our customers are thinking, can I, um, can I run my 100 queries that need, let's say, 20 cores today or 24 cores today in less number of cores? That's the question they're asking. Now, because I have faster storage, I should be able to do that. And that's, that's been, they, they prove themselves. Um, uh, so obviously, like you said, it is reduced number of cores, right? It's kind of very obvious how that happens. And also, all the other um, costs associated with the, with, the, with the core, maintenance and whatnot, right? Uh, yeah, this is this is a this is a very interesting uh, solution, Flash, especially for Extreme IO, in terms of how you can consolidate and reduce overall infrastructure cost. You know, I saw the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant come out. Obviously, you guys must have been pretty happy with that. I mean, Extreme IO is relatively new, uh, and you got the top spot. I have to say, I was a little surprised. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, I, I mean. I, I guess, I mean, Pure's been out for a while, maybe, maybe a different class of product. Um, why do you think you were able to achieve that? I, I mean, that's a, that's a horrible question, but I want to unpack that a little bit. Yeah. You know, people just say, well, it's because you spent a lot of money with Gartner. Okay, I know the Gartner guys, and you know, while they get criticized a lot for that, it's not that easy. You know, you got to <laughs> have some chops. So, but I was a little bit surprised, given the newness of Extreme IO. You guys were in directed beta for, for so long. Um, what am I missing? So we are very happy to be, you know, figured in the, you know, the top right corner um, uh, as part of the magic quadrant. So Dave, it all starts with the EMC brand value. EMC has been selling storage for years, and we've been the leaders, right? Extreme IO is the new, you know, form of array, new all flash array as part of EMC bigger portfolio. So the brand of EMC automatically is now attached to Extreme IO. The sense of quality EMC brings to the table and our, our ability to execute, right? All these different aspects of EMC comes into play when we talk about Extreme IO. That's what, we're not surprised that we are, we are there because we are EMC and we have a great storage array, all flash storage array, which is very unique in the industry like you said, we've been shipping only for now three quarters. We're not done three quarters. This is the third quarter we're shipping. So we're happy to you know, kind of getting that. We hope to improve upon that in, in coming quarters, coming years. Now, what should customers know about um, Extreme IO? You've got new software release coming out. Um, can you talk to practitioners about the migration plan from where they are today for the existing customers? Obviously the new guys you know, have to have to think about it, but for the existing ones, how do they go from A to B, and how do you minimize that disruption? Can you talk about that migration plan? So I believe you're talking about our upcoming 3.0 release. Yes. Uh, so let me highlight some of the key aspects why we are doing 3.0. Uh, so 3.0, essentially very relevant to the audience here, right? Now, 3.0 will improve Oracle performance by 30 to 40%, and it will cut down storage costs by half because of our compression, right? That is the biggest value 3.0 is bringing. So we are offering an EMC service, it's a free service to our customers, existing customers, to move from you know, the existing version to 3.0. Now, our customers have been, um, you know, have been appraised of this you know, from beginning. They see the huge value 3.0 brings in terms of performance, in terms of compression that we're bringing to the table. So for us, it's, it's about providing them the path, and we are doing it through a free service, EMC service. It is like, um, uh, Dave, it is like you have a Mercedes car. EMC will bring with another Mercedes car and a chauffeur, and they will take you for a weekend ride while your existing car is being serviced, upgraded. When you come back, your car is now you know, more performant and more efficient. So that's the way we're thinking about it. It's a service that we are offering. 
So uh, we, are, we are really excited that you know, this, is, uh, this is coming along and we, we, we're really great to see all the uh, input and appreciation from our customers. Well, it's classic EMC, right? I mean, migration's never been an easy thing. Um, so okay, so you're wrapping services around that to make it as seamless as possible for customers. And then these customers get compression, dedupe's already there, what else, what else do they get? So, um, 3Auto, like I said, uh, it improves Oracle performance by 30 to 40 percent, right? So that's the biggest thing that uh, you're going to get in addition to compression, right? And we think that this is uh, a new uh, platform for us to deliver, deliver new services uh, on top of this architecture. So now your competitors would say, oh, it's a disruptive migration. Uh, can, you, can you promise me that this will be the last disruptive migration that I'll have to face, or no? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're thinking about it. So it, this was a tough decision, Dave. This was a tough decision to have this, uh, this, this, this uh, what we call upgrade, which needs EMC service, right? Um, it was a tough decision, but we had to do it. I think we're doing the right thing because we wanted to deliver more value to our customers. Well, it's early on, too. Right. Had you done this four years in, it would have been a different story. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then, then note that this allows you to keep your any existing investment. We're not asking you to throw away your uh, hardware that you b already bought from us. So it'll keep your existing in, you know, intact. It's a software upgrade. I, I don't have to buy new, new hardware. And EMC has a lot of experience with this, but you know, especially with, with Symmetrics and VMAX, yep. I mean, that was big. So you learned a lot from that, and you've been able to keep your customers, to your point about EMC's execution. People always telling me, because they always get accused of being an EMC fanboy, but you have to give the company a lot of credit for its ability to migrate through some of these really difficult hurdles, right. and customers keep coming back for more. Oracle, same way. You know, you got to give companies that are able to migrate through those transitions a lot of credit, and the reason is because they're delivering value. Um, so where do you see this whole flash thing going? Uh, there's a crowd out there that says, oh, it's going to replace spinning disk. Greg Shearer was on this morning and said, even if you want to replace every spinning disk out there, there's not a flash capacity on the planet to do that. So obviously that's not going to happen anytime soon. Having said that, there's really alluring value in flash. All active data will be on flash. So where do you see this whole thing going in the next three to five years? So if you look at the data growth, Dave, the most of the data growth is happening in the active data, like you mentioned. Right. right? I believe that, my personal opinion is that most of those active data will be on flash. So which means that there is a huge growth in active, there will be huge flash adoption because to serve this active data. Um, and what happens to other kind of data? Obviously, you know, data is made of different kind, of different storage out there. Uh, people said tape will go away, tape still exists in, uh, in enterprise boundaries. Same thing happened to a disk, but the amount of huge growth that you will see in active data will, will really propel this flash adoption. Mm. Vinay, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE and uh, helping us unpack some of the innovations that are going on in, uh, in Extreme I.O. We're very interested in seeing EMC's formal response to the Oracle's claims. Uh, that'd be great to, to see. It's, a, it's a, lot of, a lot of fun here at Oracle Open World. It always is. So again, thanks for coming to theCUBE. Thanks a lot. Really happy to be here. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Oracle Open World 2014, and we'll be right back.